Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Well done, OP. I love how completely shocked HR people are when you refuse to sign their stupid papers. Most people just blindly sign anything. But before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like if you enjoy the content, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a juicy story. The HR lady doesn't like me much. So this happened at the company that I currently work for, but it was many years ago. I didn't plan the outcome, just a coincidence caused by insisting on malicious compliance. I work in IT, and when I started, my job was rather entry-level, but it was paid as a salaried position. After some years, the company decided to make it an hourly position, which I didn't like for a variety of reasons. The company's main hourly worker pool was for manufacturing and assembly line, so the company structured its hourly policies around that position. Rigid start and end time, scheduled breaks and sick time billed to your earned PTO. A lot of these policies were not really compatible with my availability and the type of work that I was doing, not to mention some of the benefits changed considerably. Hourly employees were supposed to use a time clock, but those were only in buildings that had manufacturing. My manager at the time totally understood why I was disgruntled. She came up with a few workarounds, one of which was to enter a generic 40-hour time card for me in the system every week, which was cool because it meant that I didn't have to use the punch clock. If there was any overtime, she would go in and fix it later. There was nothing that I could do about the change to hourly, but being me, I was pretty vocal about it and my attitude eventually caught the attention of the HR lady. She also got wind of the whole time card deal, so that came to an end. I gave in and started using the punch clock. No more edits. At some point, my manager needed me to start the day in a different building, which had no punch clock. I don't think she was aware that there was no punch clock, so she had to make an edit to my time card for that day. Well, the HR lady saw the edit and assumed that I was still being obstinate. Out of the blue, my manager scheduled a formal type meeting with me in one of the local conference rooms. She presents a document for me to sign and read, which is a formal reprimand for not following the policy regarding the time clocks. I was instantly furious because I was following the policy, but she sent me to a site without a punch clock. She had no choice as the HR lady was the one who wrote the reprimand and told my manager to have me sign it. I read through the write-up and realized it was very poorly written, like a grade schooler had prepared it. Lots of copy and pasted text, points that did not apply to the issue at hand, and no clearly defined problem with a desired resolution and probationary period. So I refused to sign. I pointed out the many mistakes, the points that did not apply, and lack of a resolution plan or time period. My manager agreed with me that the reprimand was bullcrap, but the HR lady wanted to go down this path. I thought, well then, we're going to do it right, and I was going to make her work for it. I demanded a rewritten form with a clearly stated problem, a desired resolution, and a time frame for when the matter would be considered resolved. My manager said, the HR lady's not going to like that. She's going to want to talk to you directly. I said, good. I will gladly tell her to her face. We scheduled a meeting. I explained to the HR lady that the reprimand process was an opportunity to not only point out mistakes, but also to correct them. The lack of an improvement plan in this write-up meant it could not meet those requirements. Begrudgingly, the HR lady accepted my complaints and agreed to redo the write-up. To my surprise, I never heard from her again about this issue. I would kind of forgot about the whole thing until they did some restructuring in IT, which made me realize I didn't want that hanging over my head unresolved. I decided to formally request a copy of my file from HR, and to my surprise, the reprimand was not in it. I emailed the HR lady asking about this, and she explained that she rescinded it, so it's gone. I was a little confused that she hadn't mentioned this in the month that had passed, but was glad it was over. Sometime later, I was having lunch with my director, and he brought up the reprimand. He was asking, whatever happened with that? And I told him HR rescinded it. Apparently, HR cannot close a reprimand without the employee's leadership signing off on it, which was about four different people. Not a single one would agree to it. It turns out that my malicious compliance with the reprimand process forced her to write a detailed, intelligible reprimand including an improvement plan. All the extra details she had to add made it clear to everyone that it was bullcrap and she couldn't add it to my file. 
I was expecting you to meet in the building with the punch clock, walk for a lot of time to the different building, and then for a lot of time back to the punch clock, accumulating a lot of overtime in doing so. And our second story. Weird overtime, boss, but okay. Some years back, I worked for a billing company doing an absolute ton of different things. I had a mix of daily tasks, which had to be done first, and other tasks with assorted deadlines. Because of this, relatively quickly after I was done with training, I was working overtime constantly. The daily tasks tended to chew up most of the day, and I needed overtime to work on the other tasks. My boss, Mark, was a big penny pincher, though, so after I'd had consistent overtime for a week, I get pulled into the office. Mark. Pant, I see you've been doing a lot of overtime. From now on, I want no more overtime whatsoever. Me. But Mark, I won't be able to get all of the work done without overtime. Mark, we can't afford to pay overtime right now, so just do your best. I shrugged and went back to work. Mark had a bad habit of undervaluing the work of others, so I figured his tune would change fairly quickly. A little over one week later, and I'm back in the office. At the time, I'd assumed a malicious compliance complete, but things got strange. Mark. Pant, I've been told you don't have the coding done for the upcoming project. Me. Well, you told me no overtime, and my daily tasks take up too much of my work hours. I don't have enough time to do those projects. Mark. Well, you need to get these things done, so work whatever hours you need to, but make sure that at the end of the week you're still only working 40 hours. Me, after a brief pause of shock. So... You want me to work however long I need to, and then leave early on Fridays? Mark, barely paying attention. Yes, just get the work done. A strange policy to be sure, but a welcome one. Mark didn't realize the box he'd opened. Working overtime Monday through Thursday did allow me to get the other projects on my plate done, but it also meant that every Friday I would leave early. Very early. Some weeks I only worked one or two hours. This meant that sometimes the daily tasks didn't get done and had to be lumped into Mondays. It took a few months for Mark to notice. Mark. Pant, I've heard you've been leaving early on Fridays. You can't just leave when you want. It makes the other employees jealous, and it's delaying tasks over the weekend. You can't just make your own hours. Who okayed this? Me. Well, you did, Mark. I'm working the schedule you told me to work. I needed the overtime to get all my tasks done, and this was your solution. Mark. Well, I don't remember that. A flush of color indicated he did indeed remember that. Look, just email me for approval every time you need overtime. Now, at this point, I thought the malicious compliance was over, but unknown to me, the saga was continuing without me even intending to. Because I listened to my boss, I emailed every time I needed to work overtime, which was every day. Like clockwork, I had an alarm one hour before my shift ended. I would draft a fresh email with the fresh reason for that particular day and send it. I foolishly thought nothing was wrong. Mark approved every time, request fulfilled, but then a month later, back into the office. Mark. Pat, I've decided that I can trust you to handle your own overtime, so you don't need to email me for approval anymore. Me. Oh, well, thanks. I'll make a note of that. I was later told by the HR staff in charge of timesheets that Mark only told me that because he was sick of dealing with my emails every day. And that's the tale of how I got to, essentially, set my own schedule, as long as it was over 40 hours a week. I'm very happy to no longer be working for Mark. Congrats. I'm surprised they didn't hire a lowered paid person to assist with the daily tasks. And our last story. Our neighbors took our fence while we were on a road trip. So we've had issues with our attached neighbors from the moment we bought our house. Originally, it was just 60-something female and her 18-something male grandson. The day we moved in, we tried to make small talk and introduced ourselves. The woman was dropping hints that the old owners used to bake her goodies all the time and she missed it, kind of insinuating that we should be like them because she deserved to be treated like a princess. The grandson introduced himself as the worst person in town. What an intro. So afterwards, we just tried to keep a friendly distance and stay out of their way. Suddenly, after about a week of living here, they began screaming at odd hours, blasting music, banging on the walls. The police were at their house for domestic disputes monthly due to the woman calling the cops on her grandson. We've lived here for over two years now, fixing up our house and making it beautiful and adding value to it. 
Up to this point, we've just let them have their problems because it's not like we have kids to worry about protecting. It's just my partner and I in our mid-twenties. Fast forward to last month. One evening after it got dark, we heard what we thought were gunshots right in our backyard. Mind you, we live in a downtown suburb borough with an older person facility right behind our house, so we were a little concerned. We have cameras that we installed just to be safe, so we checked them. The grandson and his friends were sitting in their yard talking about shoot another round. They'll just think it's fireworks, and that's a 45 round. Unfortunately, it was dark and we couldn't see them shoot it, but the cameras picked up the sound of them shooting off nine rounds, so we naturally called the cops. The kids then left and the cops couldn't prove anyone was on the premises with a gun, so they let it go. In the beginning of August, the woman decided to let her daughter, sister-in-law, and their children move in with them for who knows what reason. Before this, they'd only come to visit on holidays, and one time they left their infant child on the street in a carrier for over a half an hour until I knocked to let them know she was out there. None of my business, but from there on, the screaming and yelling got worse, and this time with crying kids in the mix. I had half a mind to call CPS, but I've heard the awful things that can happen to kids in the system, so I couldn't bring myself to do it. This month, we were fortunate enough to go on a road trip to see some cool places and visit family. We left the end of August, and we were checking our cameras when we had service, which was not much. One day, we get a call from our unattached neighbor saying our attached neighbors were building a really ugly shed with spare planks from who knows where. We tried not to worry too much because up to this point, their crappy shed wasn't our problem other than an eyesore in the neighborhood. We just enjoyed the rest of our trip and let it go, occasionally checking to make sure they weren't in our yard or anything since it's nicely fenced in and gated. Didn't catch anything on camera other than them building their crappy shed. We arrived home a few hours ago to find that these entitled jerks dug out and stole part of our fence, metal post and chain link, to create a back fence slash gate for their yard. This left huge holes in our back parking area that my partner almost tripped and fell into. They also tied into our fence incorrectly, pulling our fence lopsided and loose, basically damaging it. Unfortunately, our camera didn't catch them taking our fence, just was in our yard in one frame and in theirs the next. Fuming with anger, we wasted no time in contacting the authorities and pressing charges against them for trespassing and theft. With the evidence from our surveillance cameras and the testimony of our unattached neighbor, justice was swiftly served. In court, the judge ruled in our favor, ordering the neighbors to replace our stolen fence and repair the damage they caused. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.